if we can just linger on the Navier Stokes uh, equations a little bit. So you've suggested, maybe you can describe it, that one of the ways to uh, solve it or to negatively resolve it would be to sort of to construct a liquid, a kind of liquid computer. Right. And then show that the halting problem from computation theory has uh, consequences for fluid dynamics. So uh, right. show it in that way. Can you describe this, this right. idea? Yeah, so this came out of, of this work of constructing the, this, this, av this average equation that, that blew up. Um, so one, um, as, as part of how I had to, to do this, so there's sort of this naive way to do it. You just, you, you just keep pushing, um, um, every time you, you get energy at one scale, you, you push it immediately to the next scale as, as fast as possible. This is sort of the naive way to, 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 to force blow up. Um, it turns out in five and high dimensions, this works. Um, but in three dimensions, there was this funny phenomenon that I discovered that if you, if you keep, if, if you change the laws of physics, you just always keep trying to push um, the energy into smaller and smaller scales. Um, what happens is that the energy starts getting spread out into multi, many scales at once. Um, so that you have energy at one scale, you're pushing it into the next scale, and then um, as soon as it enters that scale, you also push it to the next scale, but there's still some energy left over from the previous scale. Um, you're trying to do everything at once. Um, and this spreads out the energy too much. Um, and then it turns out that, that um, it makes it vulnerable for viscosity to come in and actually just damp out everything. So, um, so it turns out this, this directed push doesn't, doesn't actually work. There was a separate paper by some other authors that actually showed this um, in three dimensions. Um, so what I needed was to program a delay. Um, so kind of like airlocks. Uh, so um, I, I needed an equation which would start with a, a fluid doing something at one scale. It would push its energy into the next scale, but it would s stay there until all the energy from the, from the larger scale got transferred. And only after you pushed all the energy in, then you sort of open the next gate, uh, and and then you you push that in as well. So, um, by, by doing that, it kind of the energy inches forward scale by scale in such a way that it's always um, localized at one scale at a time, um, and then it can resist the effects of viscosity because it's, it's not dispersed. Um, so, in order to make that happen, um, yeah, I had to construct a rather complicated nonlinearity, um, and it was basically like. Um, you know, like it was constructing like an electronic circuit. So I, I actually thank my wife for this because she was trained as an electrical engineer. Um, and, um, you know, she, she talked about, um, uh, you know, she had to design circuits and so forth. And, you know, if you, if you want a circuit that does a certain thing, like maybe have a light that, that flashes on and then turns off and then on and then off, you can build it from, from more primitive components, you know, capacitors and resistors and so forth. And you have to build a diagram and you, you um, and these diagrams, you can you can sort of follow with your eyeballs and say, oh yeah, the the, the current will, will build up here and then it will stop and then it will do that. So I knew how to build the analog of basic electronic components, you know, like resistors and capacitors and so forth, and and I would I would stack them together um, in such in such a way that that I would create something that would open one gate and then there'll be a clock that would and then once the clock hits a certain threshold, it would close it. Uh, it kind of a Rube Goldberg type machine, but described mathematically, and this ended up working. So what I realized is that if you could pull the same thing off for the actual equations, so if the equations of water support a computation, so um, like if you can imagine kind of a steampunk, but it's really water punk uh, type of thing where, um, you know, so modern computers are electronic, you know, they, they, they're, they're powered by, by electrons p passing through very tiny wires and interacting with other, other electrons and, and so forth. But instead of electrons, you, you can imagine these pulses of, of water moving at a certain velocity and maybe it's there are two different configurations corresponding to a bit being up or down. Probably that if you had two of these moving bodies of water collide, uh, they would come out with some new configuration, which is which would be something like an AND gate or OR gate. You know that, that it, it, the 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 output would depend in a very predictable way on on the inputs, and like you could chain these together and maybe create a Turing machine, and and then you could you have computers uh, which are made completely out of water. Um, and if you have computers, then maybe you can do robotics. I, I, so I mean, you know, hydraulics and so forth. Um, and so you could create some machine, which is basically a fluid analog of what's called a von Neumann machine. Uh, so von Neumann proposed, if you want to colonize Mars, the sheer cost of transporting people and machines to Mars is just ridiculous. But if you could transport one machine to Mars, and this machine had the ability to mine the planet, create some more materials, smelt them, and build more copies of the same machine. Um, then you could colonize the whole planet um, over time. Um, so uh, if you could build a fluid machine, which uh, 
Yeah, so it's 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 a it's a ro- it's a fluid robot, okay. and what it would do, it, it's it's purpose in life. It's programmed so that it would create a smaller version of itself in some sort of cold state. It, it wouldn't start just yet. Once it's ready, the big robot configuration of water would transfer all, all its energy into the smaller configuration and then power down, okay, and then like like it clean itself up, and then what's left is this newer state, which would then turn on and do the same thing but smaller and faster, and then the equation has a certain scaling symmetry. Once you do that, it can just keep iterating. So this, in principle, would create a blow up uh, for the actual Navier-Stokes, and this is what I managed to accomplish for this average Navier-Stokes. So it provided this sort of roadmap to solve the problem. Now, this is uh, a, a pipe dream because uh, there are so many things that are missing for this to actually be a reality. Um, so um, I, I, I can't create these basic logic gates. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have these in these special configurations of water. Um, I mean, there's candidates that include vortex rings that might possibly work, but um, um, but also, you know, analog computing is really nasty um, compared to digital computing. I mean, because there's always errors. Um, you, you have to you have to do a lot of error correction along the way. I don't know how to completely power down the big machine so that it doesn't interfere with the the, the running of the smaller machine. But everything in principle can happen. Like it doesn't contradict any of the laws of physics. Um, so it's sort of evidence that this thing is possible. Um, there are other groups who are now pursuing ways to make Navier-Stokes blow up, which are nowhere near as ridiculously complicated as this. Um, um, they, they actually are pursuing much closer to the, the direct self-similar model, which can, uh, it, it doesn't quite work as is, but there could be some simpler scheme than what I just described to make this work. There is a real leap of genius here to go from Navier-Stokes to this Turing machine. So it goes from what the self-similar blob scenario that you're trying to get the smaller and smaller blob mm-hmm. to now having a liquid Turing machine gets smaller right. and smaller and smaller and somehow seeing how that could be used to say something about a blow up. I mean, that's a big leap. So there's precedent. I mean, um, so the the thing about mathematics is that it's, it's really good at um, spotting connections between what you think of, what you might think of as completely different um, problems. Um, but if if the mathematical form is the same, you, you can you, you can you can draw a connection. Um, so um, there's a lot of work previously on what is called cellular automata. Um, the most famous of which is Conway's Game of Life. This is infinite discrete grid, and at any given time, the grid is either occupied by a cell or it's empty. And there's a very simple rule that uh, tells you how these cells evolve. So sometimes cells live, and sometimes they, they die. Um, and this, um, you know, um, when I was a, a student, uh, it was a very popular screensaver to actually just have these these animations go, go on. And and they look very chaotic. In fact, they look a little bit like turbulent flow sometimes. But at some point, people discovered more and more interesting structures within this game of life. Um, so, for example, they discovered this thing called a glider. So a glider is a very tiny configuration of like four or five cells, which evolves and it just moves at a certain direction. And that's like this this vortex rings. This analog. Um, yeah, so this is an analogy. The game of life is kind of like a discrete equation and and um, the fluid Navier-Stokes is, is a continuous equation, but mathematically they have some similar features. Um, and um, so over time people discovered more and more interesting things that you could build within the game of life. The game of life is a very simple system. It only has like three or four rules um, to, to do it, but, but you can design all kinds of interesting configurations inside it. Um, there's something called a glider gun that does nothing but spit out gliders one at a, one, one at a time. Um, and then after a lot of effort, people managed to, to create um, AND gates and OR gates for gliders. Like this is massive, ridiculous structure, which if you if a, if a, if you have a stream of gliders um, coming in here and a stream of gliders coming in here, then you may produce a stream of gliders coming out if, if maybe if both of, of the um, streams um, have gliders, then there'll be an out- output stream. But if only one of them does, then nothing comes out. Mm-hmm. So they could build something like that. And once you could build an, um, these basic gates, then just from software engineering, you can build almost anything. Um, you can build a Turing machine. I mean, it's, it's like an enormous steampunk type things. They look ridiculous. But then people also generated self-replicating objects in the game of life. A massive machine, a bonhomme machine, which over a lo- huge period of time, and it always looked like glider guns inside doing these very steampunk calculations, it would create another version of itself which could replicate. It's that. so incredible. A lot of this was like community crowdsourced by uh, like amateur mathematicians, actually. Um, so I knew about that 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 work, and so th- that is part of what inspired me to propose the same thing with Navier Stokes. 
Um, now, if it's a much, as I said, analog is much worse than digital. Like it's going to be, um, you can't just directly take the constructions from the game of life and plunk them in. But again, it just it shows it's possible.